and welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over the basics of setting up a three-dimensional milling operation on our object using Rhino and RhinoCam. As you can see, I already have my tools, the tool setup that I need to work with. I also have my box stock set up right there. So what I need to do now is build my milling operation. So we're going to use the milling operations tab right here, and we want to use a three-axis milling operation. So when I click on that arrow, you'll see that I get a ton of varieties, I believe 20 different types of basic milling operations, from horizontal roughing uh, to clearing flats off an object to pencil tracing, valley machining, all that fun stuff. But we're going to work with, since we're dealing with foam, which is a very soft material, is <clears throat> parallel finishing. So I'm going to click on the parallel fish finishing tool. As soon as I do that, you'll see that I get this window that pops up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tabs. And each of these tabs has a specific set of parameters embedded into it. The first tab asked me if I want to select a specific region to mill. Now if we look at my file right here, we can see that it is completely flat, let's go to a front view, that there's a large portion of it that is completely flat. And then what happens is there's a nice smooth transition to these holes. I have these little borders set up right here. And what these borders allow me to do is set up a region for milling so that I don't have to spend a lot of time with the mill simply running all the way across the material turning coming all the way back. What will happen now is the mill is actually going to by specifying these areas as regions the mill will actually move over to this zone and then only take out that bit of material and then it will move over to this zone and only take out that bit of material so on and so on. So here's how we do that where it says select drive containment regions we click on that and then we select our regions. Right click to accept those and you'll see the drive regions 1 through 4 have shown up now. They're also highlighted in my perspective viewport. Next we're going to click on the tool tab and you'll see that since we only have one tool that's the only tool that we see shows up. We can also verify that all of our speeds are set properly which they look like they are so super awesome. We can go to the feeds and speeds tab and we can actually make modifications to our feeds and speeds. Uh, we don't want to bother doing that since we already set it up with a tool. So let's just chill out and leave everything right there. Now we have this <coughs> tab called the clearance plane. As soon as the mill starts spinning, it is going to continually spin until it's completed all of its operations. As such, if you have any anomalies in your material, so let's say our stock material, well it is foam, let's say that there are parts of that foam that sort of bump out, project up in the z-axis. We want to make sure that that mill can clear all of those little bits and doesn't leave a mark in our material. So for me it's always been a good idea to set our clearance plane definition at part max z plus a distance. So in other words it means whatever the highest z is on this it's going to add whatever distance we enter into it. So I'm going to set that for one inch. That will help us out tremendously. Now we go to our cut parameters. The cut parameters includes information on intol, altol, and stock. Don't worry about all of this stuff. What we're more concerned with is cut control and step over control. So with cut control we can actually um, um, specify exactly how the path for the milling operation works. And with parallel finishing, parallel finishing is an operation where the bit is basically going to come over here, it's going to go across, it's going to turn, it's going to come back, it's going to go across, back, back and forth, and back and forth. <clears throat> We're going to leave all of the cut control information at its default. But with step over, this is a biggie for us. Step over refers to the path of the bit and how close those paths, paths should be to one another based off of the diameter of the tool. So as we can see by default, the tool diameter or the path, the step over control right now is set to a tool diameter of 25%. That means that each milling path 
will be 25% of, or the distance between each path will be 25% of the distance or the diameter of our tool. Let's think of it this way. We're using a half inch diameter tool bit. So by default, the paths here <clears throat> will be an eighth of an inch offset from one another. Now, I could say, well, I want it to be even more precise, so I'm gonna set it for 2%. And that's great, except for the fact that it means that it's going to take a lot longer to mill. So why don't we stay with the default of 25% for this and see how long it takes to mill this sheet. We have this tab right here called Z containment. And with Z containment, you can actually specify, for example, how many steps down the mill should take um, to cut through your object. So we can see in this 3D representation, the tool path, we can see it turning around and coming back up, going down and up. If we had a very hard material that we didn't want this to, uh, that we didn't want the bit to plunge into, we could have it step down and mult in a multiple fashion. So you can see here when I turn that on, what it's going to do is it's going to step down this far, mill everything out, then it's going to step down this far, mill everything out, step down this far, mill everything out. Again, since we're working with foam, we should be all right in getting away with not having it perform multiple step downs. Then we have this tab for entry and exit. Again, this refers to the different ways you can choreograph how the bit enters and exits uh, your material. We're actually going to leave all of these as default. And you'll notice that we've gone through all of these tabs. So we're going to hit generate. You'll see that it's now computing my tool paths. And what shows up after it's done that are two things. In my machining job window, you'll see that I now have a folder called Parallel Finishing. When we look in the screen here, we can see that I have a whole bunch of blue lines that have shown up, red lines, and yellow lines. If they don't show up, that's because you don't have toolpath visibility turned on down here. So I can toggle that on and off. I can also, of course, toggle on and off my stock material visibility. Oops. So I'm going to turn on toolpath visibility just so we can see what's going on. And so basically what's going to happen is, is that the mill is going to start here. And it's going to cut through every one of these, or it's going to follow every one of these paths down into there. And it's also going to project itself up right here. Since it's basically cut through our piece already, it's just going to not bother milling through all that. It's going to take too much time. This red line means that the mill is then going to travel over here and it's going to perform the same operation. Then it's going to travel over here, perform the same operation, travel over here, perform the same operation. We can actually visualize this or simulate this if we want by clicking on the simulate button. And in that case, I'm going to turn off my toolpath visibility, and I'm just going to hit the play button. And as you can see now, <clears throat> RhinoCam is actually giving us a very crude in terms of resolution, but accurate representation of the milling operation. Isn't it hypnotic? And I can speed that up if I really want to by adjusting that toggle right there, that slider right there. And so there we can now see exactly what's going to be milled out. Now, as I said, this is fairly accurate, but not ridiculously accurate. So, you know, uh, uh, it's giving us a fast preview. So take take what you see here with a slight grain of salt. But it does give you a fairly, fairly accurate representation of how the milling operations are going to function. We can um, turn on other information. So we can you know, put our tool pads on so we can see them as, as it's uh, running. We can also turn on the visibility of the holder as well if we wanted to see what that looks like. <clears throat> now you'll notice this red highlight right here. This red highlight is telling us that um, there's a uh, that this is essentially a piece that's being removed. So we're all fine with that. Sometimes though you'll see a red highlight showing up and the part of the reason why it's showing up red is just because of all the lines. Sometimes you'll see a bit of red show up along the side here, a surface that's coated in red. What that's letting you know is that a uh, part of the tool that should not hit material is hitting material. That lets you know that it's time to take a step back and reevaluate your milling operations. So as we can see, we have this first operation set up. The last thing we can do is we can select our parallel finishing folder and actually 
check to see how long it's going to take to mill this information. So I'm going to right click on that and go to information. And as we can see here, at a cut feed rate of 500 inches per minute using this bit, it's going to take approximately six minutes to machine. One of the rules, uh, um, golden rules for us to follow is that any time you see here, you should add about 30, 30 to 40 percent to that time. Uh, I'm sorry, 25 percent is good. Um, the estimation is fairly accurate, but not completely accurate. So it's saying it's going to take six minutes. Let's actually err on the side of caution and say it's going to be seven and a half minutes. And there we go. That's our first milling operation. In our next step, we're going to figure out how to remove this material here and then how to cut a border around the entire file. I should also mention before I go that let's say you wanted to make edits to this, adjustments to this. Well, you can open up this parallel finishing folder and actually go here and click on the toolpaths, view them, and or edit them. Very, very handy feature. Or better yet, you can just double click on the folder and go back into the tabs themselves. So I could easily come back in here and adjust the Z containment. Let's actually do that. So I'm going to set the Z containment so that it um, only goes down a distance of, I'm going to do it in two paths in other words, so a distance of one inch. And I'm going to hit generate again. <clears throat> You'll see now a whole bunch more lines are showing up in here than were there before. And I have to, of course, regenerate this. Okay just to be sure. And let's go to our time now information. We can see that to do two passes, it's going to take us 10 minutes. So the beauty of this is that once, even though this, you know, once this folder, this operation shows up, you can still perform edits to it and then regenerate your file. So I'm going to turn that off and hit generate again. And there we go. All right, so as I said, in our next video, we're going to take a look at how to remove the sides here and how to create a border.